Last month, I presented a video about concerns about fluoride and developmental delays in children. Now there's a new study in the Journal of the American Medical Association that has concerns about lowered IQ points. So let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. David Berger, a board-certified pediatrician in Tampa. The focus of my practice is making healthy kids. How can we optimize nutrition, lower toxic exposures in order to reduce the chances of chronic childhood physical and neurodevelopmental diseases? Now, in my last video about fluoride, I talked about what fluoride is, how people are exposed, not just through water, how it may be preventing tooth decay, but also research that was associating it with developmental delays and other concerns. Now, I've put a link to that video down in the show description so that you can see more about that information, but I'm not going to cover all of that again today. But I am going to talk about this new report that questions the link between fluoride in drinking water and lower IQ points in children. It was published in the pediatric section of the Journal of the American Medical Association, and it was a review of 74 different studies. This is what we call a meta-analysis. And of course, this is a little difficult to do because not all studies may have the exact same parameters, but these are experts who look at these and they can make conclusions based upon putting all of this together. Now, what they found was that there was a significant association between higher fluoride levels and lower IQ points. They did a couple different measurements to find out. In for, they first measured the fluoride in the drinking water that these children were exposed to. And they found that there was an association with lower IQ points when the amount of fluoride in the water was restricted to no more than four milligrams per liter of fluoride in the water as well as at two milligrams per liter in the water. They did not see the lower IQ points when the amount that was in the water is 1.5 milligrams per liter. They also did measurements of the urine of the children, and they saw the same associations with the lower IQ points when there was four milligrams per liter and two milligrams of, per liter of fluoride in their urine. So again, not in the drinking. With the, so this is what's going out as opposed to what's going in. But also, they did see this association even when it was only 1.5 milligrams per liter of fluoride in the urine, so even the lower amount, that was showing a problem. Now, what they found, though, was that there was a correlation. The higher the amount of fluoride, the lower the IQ. And they found that for every one milligram per liter of fluoride in the urine, there was a drop of 1.63 IQ points, which means if at four point at four milligrams per liter in the urine, that would be a lowering of 6.5 IQ points. And while that may not sound like a lot, I, I assume a lot of us wish we had 6.5 more IQ points now. So this is really a concern. And of course, this is in developing children who are being exposed. Now, there is some limitations to the study. A lot of them were not of the greatest quality, but as I said, it's still something. And these studies were almost exclusively studied from individuals outside the United States, in China and other countries as well. And often in those countries, they do have a higher amount of fluoride in their drinking water compared to what we have here. Now, in America, fluoride has been added to the drinking water for decades. But there was, in the past decade, a lowering of the amount of the maximum amount that's allowed in the water. And so almost all drinking um, from all water from public utilities shouldn't have more than should not have more than seven parts per million of fluoride per liter um, uh, in the water. Now, that amount, though, hasn't been studied either. So we really don't know for sure if this lowering made a difference. You'd think it would since it should be less exposure, but we still don't know if this amount is OK. So really, you know, this is a call for increased research on this. There needs to be an independent panel put together to review all of the evidence that's out there. OK, um, hopefully that's going to be happening now that um, with the change of administration and a renewed interest in looking at all of this. It is also good to know that the University of North Carolina is currently having a study that tracks the families using fluoridated and non-fluoridated water, and they're studying these kids for four years. So hopefully that will be more information that can give us more answers as to what needs to be done. So overall, 
you know, this is more mounting evidence about the concerns about fluoride and what it might be doing while trying to get a benefit. We need to know if there is a safe amount of fluoride in water that can protect teeth while not causing the loss of IQ or bringing other delays or other problems that maybe we don't know about. It is concerning that even the lower amounts of fluoride in the urine um, brought the lower IQ, but perhaps we can figure out what that level is that's safe but could be effective. Urine collection is easy to do. It's usually pretty um, inexpensive to do as well. So, and it's also easy to collect. So that's also nice. So hopefully we're going to get more information about this. I wish I had all the answers right now, but again, more evidence is out there. Have a nice day.